Hey guys, I have an OLJ Q&A for you today. If you're like, what the heck is that? It's a question and answer style video. I thought I'd, uh, oop, burp, that was a funny noise. I thought I'd do a little Winnie cameo because you guys don't see her that much on this channel. It's my dog Winnie, if you are unfamiliar. She has her very own blog, winniethezoo.com. I will link it. It's always linked actually in my below box. She wants to get down, but anyway, I just thought you would want to see Winnie. So, okay, thank you Winnie, you did your part. <laughs> Like, that's right. I did my part. Anyway, what is OLJ Q&A? Well, that's where I answer your organization-related questions. I reached out on Facebook and Twitter. You guys sent me so many questions. Thank you so much. I picked five of what I thought were the most popular ones. Well, I can tell on Facebook because people thumbs them up. And on Twitter, I picked five that I thought I hadn't really answered. Um, in the last couple of ones. I do one of these every few months or so. And I am not giving up on my clothes and or clothes and organization, uh, no, clothes and accessories organization series. I just, we've had a lot of travel going on right now and I needed a little more time to work on my closet. So I will have that for you next week for sure. Um, so check back next week for that update. But in the meanwhile, I'm gonna go through, I have my little cheat sheet printed out, everything here. And I'm gonna answer these questions. These videos tend to be long, so I better stop flapping my trap and answering the questions. Okay, so starting with Twitter. Kelly asks, how do you monitor your goals and resolutions throughout the year and keep track of your progress? Um, this is an interesting question, I thought, because oftentimes I feel like, you know, we make goals and resolutions at the beginning of the year because it's, you know, kind of the time that people do that and new year, new you, all that. And then you can lose sight of them and they kind of like fall off your radar. Um, I tend to keep my particular list on my brain all of the time. Not like I'm constantly thinking about them, but it's just kind of simmering in the background. I do, um, I have my planner here. I do have a section in my planner um, for personal. It says personal, you probably can't see that you're like, what? Um, where I keep um, kind of my, my work schedule that I've kind of outlined for myself. Um, as well as my personal and um, kind of work-related goals, which I, I do this every January. I share it. I have a video, actually, if you want to hear all about my goals, I will link that below, and I'll, I'll pop in a link somewhere here. Um, but I do do some, like, pretty dedicated goal planning at the beginning of the year, and um, most of these things are kind of similar goals from year to year, I'm just trying to stay healthy in, in both physical and emotional wellness, um, and also be productive, um, and, uh, you know, in a way that, that works for me, um, and prioritizing things that I think are important in my life, like time with my family, and, um, you know, personal time, me time, uh, learning new things, um, kind of expanding my knowledge, um, and keeping up with what I do. And this is what I do. I make videos and I write blog posts. Um, so there's, there's sort of like the general overview. And I do from time to time flip to this and just kind of go through it. Um, but I don't have like a regimented system for keeping up with my, my goals and resolutions. But like I said, there are things that um, I spend a lot of time thinking about as the year comes to a close and the beginning of the year starts. And they're things that I have been thinking about for a while. Um, so they're kind of on my mind. Uh, but I would say that if you want to keep in better touch with your goals and resolutions, then to do maybe like what I did and write them out or whatever, however style, um, if you want to type them and make them like part of the background of your screen, you know, your like screen background on your computer, um, that would be good if you're like a visual person or to pin them up somewhere where you're going to look all often, like in your office or in your kitchen or in your agenda or wherever you're going to look often. Um, maybe you could even have them laminated and punch holes with them and stick them in your planner and you can even move them around from week to week in your calendar. I mean, the sky's the limit with, with ways that you can keep um, that kind of priority list. Uh, you know, accessible. That would be my number one suggestion if you want to really be checking in on them more often is to to actually write out the list, either type it or write it or whatever, and put it in a place where you really see it. And then it keeps it kind of fresh. Um, so there's that. Ashley asks, do you have an organizing system for your laundry or is it just pretty straightforward? 
I think my laundry organization is pretty straightforward. I actually picked this question because I'm trying to get a feel for, um, I've been getting requests over the years for a laundry organization um, video or video series. I don't know if it'd be longer than just one video. And I really wanted to kind of test the water, see if you guys are interested in that. Uh, because I know laundry, you know, it's something we all have to do, and there are different ways to do it. And I would just be sharing how I do mine, not saying it's like the end all be all way for doing laundry, but you know, that's how we learn is by sharing. Um, but it is pretty straightforward. I tend to do laundry two days a week. Now, if I had children, obviously I'd be doing chil uh, children, I'd be doing laundry more than two days a week. But just between um, keeping up with my husband and my clothing, as well as you know the household laundry, I have one day that I dedicate to clothing laundry and one day for linens. Um, and um, I can go through that in more detail in a video if you guys are really interested. Um, but my, my like my basic laundry organization is. Um, I just always do things in the same order and the way I put a, like way I fold and put my clothes into a basket uh, makes it really easy to put them away. So I fold them and organize them in the laundry basket in a way that makes it super fast to put clothing away because I do not like having laundry baskets like hanging around for days. I put my laundry away as soon as I bring the basket up because I just don't like having the baskets out with the clean laundry. It's like just put it away already. <laughs> um, but having it organized in a way that makes it easy to put away uh, clothes, just really facilitates the whole process. And I know some people just really hate putting away laundry. That would be one of my suggestions for that. I do a very similar thing with the way I load my dishwasher. And I've actually been thinking about doing a dishwasher video, which seems kind of silly, which is why I haven't done it yet, but I'm like, I have a system for loading my dishwasher. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that. And thank you, Ashley, for your question. Thank you, everybody, for your questions, by the way. I got a lot of questions. I obviously can't answer all of them, uh, but I do appreciate you asking. Okay, Fern asks, I have shoes loose in the bottom of my wardrobe, just piled up. Any affordable organizing suggestions? Well, Fern, I have a few. Um, if you have space for a low um, shoe cubby organizer, which you can get pretty inexpensively at Walmart or Target, um, they're just kind of these low racks with little cubby holes. Um, it, that, that really helps a lot because then you can organize shoes by pair, you know, in these cubbies and it keeps them off the floor. My main suggestion would be to try to keep your, your shoes off the floor. Another thing you could do if that might be a little bit out of your budget, I know the dollar store has a lot of kind of these plastic bins in different sizes. Um, and some of them are round and some of them are square. I mean, it just depends what you are after. But if you were looking for something where you just spend a few dollars, maybe pick up a few bins that you designate for different kinds of shoes and then keep shoe different kinds of shoes in each bin. So in one bin, have all of your sandals and flip-flops. And in another bin, have all your sneakers and tennis shoes. And in a third bin, have your dress shoes. Now that's a little less, um, you know, um, micro organized because things are grouped by um, type, but it does help keep your things off the floor and separated by category so it's easy to find them. And if you don't want to buy different color bins where you could like easily, you know, color code like, oh, the white bin is for sandals and the blue bin is for dress shoes, um, you could just print out or even write out little tags that you hang or tape onto the bins that say what each bin is for. Um, those would be my, my first suggestions, I think, just off the top of my head. Also, you can buy these hanging shoe organizers, like if you really want to get off the floor altogether. Um, they're a little bit, you know, they're probably less than the cubby hole version, but more than the dollar store bin version, um, where you hang them and they have slots for each kind of shoe, uh, or each pair, like, you know, pairs of shoes, and so it's hanging, and there's like little compartments. So those would be my top three suggestions for getting your shoes um, off the floor and organized. Um, I don't think you have to spend a lot to organize. I mean, if you even like didn't have any money at all to spend, you could even get some boxes, um, either you know that you have on hand or um, that you pick up. You know, stores sometimes have boxes that they're not using anymore. You can cover them in wrapping paper that you have on hand to make them look nice and use those instead of the dollar store bins. I mean, you really just have to kind of use your imagination um, for that sort of thing. Mrs. Reb W asks, you can only organize three areas at home. Which do you pick and why? 
I always start in the kitchen when I'm organizing. How about you? Yes, I agree. My top picks, if I could only organize three areas of my home, I'm assuming like on a regular basis. Kitchen, number one, I clean and organize my kitchen every single day. Um, I make sure to pick up off the counter, I clean the countertops, um, I make sure the, you know, the garbage is out, I make sure all of the dishes are put away that are dry and ready to go away. I just, I like, you know, wiping down my sink and making sure everything's tidy. I just think that's important. And I keep on top of my drawer organization and my cabinet organization and my pantry organization. Um, just really even just by first, putting in an organizational system that works for you, but to keep on top of it is just putting things back in the right place. And that makes a huge difference. Oh my God, this video is gonna be so long. Okay, I'm moving right along. So the second area I would choose to organize would probably be my mudroom because that is a high traffic area for us. We go in and out of it a lot and a lot of things are stored in there that are very important. Like all of my dogs, most important things, and our coats, and our car keys, and my purse, and you know, I would just want to keep on top of that area. And then the third area I would choose would be my desk in my office because I work from home and it's really important for me to have a clean workspace and an organized workspace to work um, and function like properly. <laughs> I find that when things get cluttered, I, my brain gets cluttered. Um, so I think those would be my top three. You know, mudroom slash bedroom, it's a, it's a tough call there. I mean, if I... It's, I said mudroom off the top of my head, but now I wonder if I want to switch that to my bedroom, like keeping my bedroom organized. But I don't know. It's a tie between the mudroom and the bedroom. I sort of cheated on that question. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, what are your guys' top three places to organize in your home? I think that's interesting. Let me know in the comments if you care to share. I think that's, that's a really good question. Okay, last Twitter question. Lindsay asks, what is your single favorite organizational tool? I get this question quite a bit and I was thinking about it and the first thing I thought was, well, my imagination. That is my most prized organizational tool. It's the one I use all the time, every day, every time I organize anything, it's my imagination because that is where the process starts for me. I visualize my space and my needs and what I want for the space and in my mind, I come up with an organizational system and I really, like 90% of the work is all creative. It's all, you know, it's all in my imagination. So that would be my number one organizational tool. All right, now for the Facebook questions. Re, uh, oh, I hope, oh, I didn't say my disclaimer yet for mispronouncing names. As usual, if I mispronounce your name, I very deeply apologize. Um, it's not my intention, so I'm sorry. Rihanna asks, how do you keep your grocery shopping organized? As far as making lists, cleaning out fridge cupboards, and planning meals. Okay, so meal, I'm gonna go kind of backwards. Meal planning, um, my husband does actually pretty much all of the cooking, uh, dinner cooking. Uh, so meal planning for us is we kind of have, we try to eat pretty clean during the week and then we tend to go out and splurge more on the weekends. So during the weekdays, and this is usually Sunday night through Thursday night, we eat at home more often than not. And my husband has a few recipes that we kind of rotate through um, frequently. We're both kind of creatures of habits. Um, I, I'm pretty picky about my like clean gr and green food. Um, so, you know, we'll eat some version of fish, some version of, you know, maybe a, like a shrimp kind of meal, and then some sort of version of chicken. That's mostly what we eat during the weekdays. Um, and uh, we usually just, you know, I'll go grocery shopping once a week, and Don will usually go maybe once or twice supplementarily a week just for us. I do like the main shop haul, and he does just little supplemental things. Um, he'll maybe pop over the store if we need something or other. Um, but usually we start at the beginning, I usually go to the grocery store, you know, on Sunday or Monday and we'll start thinking, um, about what we want to eat. Maybe Sunday we'll talk about what we want to eat that week and I'll pick up things at least to last us for a few days. And then one of us will make a, one of a supplemental grocery run for fresh items that, you, you know, we don't want to keep more than a few days in our fridge, like fish or something later in the week. Like I said, we do rotate through about half a dozen meals, so it's not hard to think of meal plans. I'm sure this will change eventually, but it's just the routine we're in now. 
Um, and then for cleaning out the fridge and covers, it's just something I do on a regular basis. I clean out the fridge way more often than I clean out my pantry, um, but I, I make a note to go through the fridge at least once a week and make sure that we're rotating through the food that needs to be eaten um, and wipe down shelves that need to be wiped down. Um, and we don't buy a lot of things at once. So we tend to buy only the food that we know we're going to be consuming that week. So we don't have a lot of things kind of just sitting in the fridge that we're not sure we're going to be eating. Um, so the fridge tends to get cleaned out automatically, basically on its own. Whereas with the pantry, probably about, I should do this once a month, but it's probably really more like every other month that I go through and make sure that, you know, we have eaten all of the, you know, if anything's expired. or We're usually pretty good about that. Again, we don't stock really a lot of extra stuff in our pantry um, that we're not really eating right now um, and I have it organized in such a way that it's easy to see everything and to really know what's in there um, so that's kind of how I deal with that and then for grocery lists um, making once we've decided what we are having then Don and I will sit down and he'll just kind of dictate what he needs and the way I organize my grocery list and I've shared this in the past but I write it down in order of how I shop in the store so I always start I do the perimeter of the store and then I do the middle so I start in produce so how I write my grocery list is I break it down into two columns and on one side the first side on the top of the column is all of my um, produce I want to pick up uh, so because that's the first area I go through and I want to go through my list when I'm in the store in order of how I'm shopping and that makes sense and another thing I do is I use um, these sticky list pads sticky note list pads by post-it note because I write my list on this and like I said I start with the produce over here and then I do like meat and fish counters down here on the other part because that's the next place I go to Dairy goes on the upper right hand corner because that's the next place I stop. And then any um, dry goods would be kind of be in the middle of this part, part and then any bread or frozen items would be at the very bottom because that would be the last section I went to. Um, and what I like about this is after I write the list, I literally just take, unstick it from the pad, bring it in my purse, and then I stick it right on the handlebars of my shopping cart. So the list is right in front of me. Um, I don't have to like constantly be pulling on my phone or pulling out a piece of paper because it's right there. And I just walk through the store as I do, you know, in the manner that I've become accustomed, going through my list, and that way I don't miss anything. And that's the system that works for me really, really well. This video is super long. Okay, moving on. Sarah asks, if you worked 40 to 50 hours a week outside the home, what would uh, what would you prioritize in terms of organizing? In other words, what organization projects could you not live without or daily organizational items or things you've done to make life easier? You know, this is actually a very similar question to that um, three areas of the home question that I answered before. I do work around 40 to 50 hours a week, actually, but I work in home, so it's a little bit different of an experience than, you know, commuting and going to a job outside of the home, because I am in the home and I can take breaks throughout the day and kind of tidy up here or there. Um, but if I did work outside the home, I feel like I would still prioritize the same areas that I prioritize now, um, which I already mentioned would be my kitchen and my office space, my desk space, and my bedroom slash mudroom. Those are sort of the high traffic areas that I know that I need to keep neat and tidy and clean and organized um, every single day. To, to be honest, all the projects um, that have made my day-to-day -day life easier have been um, just my drawer organization and pantry organization and my kitchen, um, the way I have my mudroom organized, my desk organization. Um, and my bedroom, my like, clothes and accessories organization. Those things all make my life a lot easier. And especially I think if I were, you know, having to get dressed for a job every day, that's another thing with working from home. I can kind of just wear sweatpants or whatever I want. Um, but if I had to like get up and get dressed every day, I think having an organized closet and wardrobe would be really important. So you're not like flummoxed trying to get ready for work in the morning. In fact, um, when I, you know, back in the day when I did work um, in jobs outside the home and I also when I was a student I would most often lay my clothes out for the next day the night before um, so I knew I would have at least that taken care of and I wouldn't have to think about it in the morning um, so that would be one of my tips I guess if, if you're 
looking for some ways to streamline your getting out to the office kind of routine in the morning. And like I said, just having an organized kitchen and keeping on top of that is really important. Um, Kristen asks, do you have a Monica closet? If so, can we see it? It seems like you always have every room under control. So it would make me feel more normal if you have even a little mess somewhere. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar, the Monica closet refers to a Friends episode. Monica is sort of this Actually, I feel like I'm very much like Monica in many ways, but she, you know, she's a neat freak and, uh, you know, very organized, but she has this one closet that they don't discover until, like, many years after they're friends, and this is in the show timeline, where she just has stuff kind of, like, crammed in. And, of course, I feel like everybody has a space like that, at least for a time. Um, I don't know if I have, like, a Monica closet, per se, um, but I do have a couple of places where I put things when I'm in transition and projects. Um, sort of my rumpus rooms, if you will. And right now, that includes the guest room closet in our green guest room, um, which right now is housing um, all of my extra gifts that I keep on hand, like, you know, gifts for family and friends. And um, also, um, like, all of my extra bins and things that I'm working on moving into the closet. I'm kind of, uh, not in the closet, up into the attic. I'm working on my attic organization. And I'm also working on my closet organization right now. And some of these things are eventually going to go in my closet. So that's kind of been sort of a place where I store things. And I'll give you a little shot of this so you, you can see it. Um, and the other one is the yellow guest room that we have. This has always been sort of the rumpus room. And it's sort of where things get stacked. And like I said, I'm in the process of kind of organizing our attic, um, which is mainly just for storing um, like collectibles that I'm not keeping out right now and stuff like that. And I'm in the process of doing that. So um, the yellow room has a lot going on in it right now. Um, it's just, you know, a lot of bins and things because it's hard. Organizing the attic is hard because it's up a ladder. Uh, so it's, you know, those rooms, that room and that closet are not particularly like awesomely organized and neat right now. Um, but I don't, you know, they're not highly used areas, so to me it seems okay. And sometimes you just gotta, you know, use your space in a way that makes sense to you at that moment. It doesn't have to look like pristine all of the time. So yes, I suppose I do have a Monica closet. Although it's not quite like Monica's closet. <laughs> Kristen asked, do you, oh, I already answered that question. Manda asks, how do you keep your spouse on board with keeping the house organized? I thought this was really interesting because my husband, Don, as you know, disorganized Don as he's known, <laughs> he's not a very organized person. Um, at least, let me rephrase that. He's not a very neat person. He has ways of organizing that work for him, which are mainly what he, and this is like a direct quote from him, in piles chronologically. So think about that for a minute in piles chronologically. That means he throws things on the floor and they pile up. Um, but if that's what works for you, that's what works for you. I kind of let him have free reign over his office. Maybe about once a year I'll poke my head in and be like, let's go through this, let's throw out some stuff, like, because he tends to keep boxes and garbage and things down there. I mean, we clean out the garbage every week, but, you know, just boxes mainly because he buys a lot of gifts that he gives me, like, online and stuff. Um, but we'll go through that about once a year and he'll do a big kind of sweep after I kind of gently nudge him. But to be honest, it's, I can't really keep him on board with the organization like exactly how I do it because we're different people. Um, but I do make it a priority to, to pick up um, after both him and myself. So, um, you know, I put all the clothing away after the laundry in the way in the organization system and... Um, you know, I pick up his clothes that he leaves on the floor and put them in the hamper. You know, sometimes he remembers to put them in the hamper. Most of the time he doesn't. Um, he, over the past few months, he's been, you know, since he's been cooking a lot more, he's been kind of a lot better at actually um, putting away dishes that are in the drying rack, uh, whereas he never used to do that. Um, but now that he cooks more and he needs that space, and I'm not always there to put things away if I'm working on something else, right when he needs the space, you know, open up. He's been good at putting things back, but um, I think just having a very clear organization system that is just easy to read by anybody makes it easier for your spouse um, to put things away. And that's really what, or staying on top of organizing really is just putting things away consistently. Um, so 
those are my tips. And really just to be, just to understand that your spouse cannot, is not the same person as you and they cannot possibly organize things the same way that you do. Um, it's just not going to happen. And just, you know, cutting them a little slack for that. And, and I think it's important to give your spouse some space where he can do his own thing. Even if it's just like the garage or, you know, my husband has a, an office. Um, in our house or whatever it is, he ha if he has his own space where you're not constantly on top of him, it makes him feel like, you know, everybody needs their own space. It's important, I think, to feel like you you belong, like you're part of it. You're not just living in somebody else's house. Okay, and last question in the world's longest video. Lacey, I want to say, but it's spelled L-E-C-Y. But we're going to go with Lacey because I'm not sure. How do you decide when it's time to overhaul an organization system that you've been using? Many organization bloggers redo things on a yearly basis when they had a great system in place before. I thought this was an interesting question because I do tend to overhaul things. Um, you know, maybe not on an annual basis, but every couple of years, every two to three years, depending on the thing. And the way that I determine when it's time is when that system stops working for me. Because as your needs grow, uh, change and whatever you know, you need changes, um, so do your organizational needs. So for instance, I reorganized my desktop recently when I had to um, make room for a second monitor and I did a whole video on that. Actually, I'll pop that in here for you guys if you're interested. Um, but my needs changed. So even though I had a great organizational system in place, I needed to change it up to accommodate my new monitor. Uh, so I, that's how I really look at it. It's when it's not just to reorganize something for the heck of reorganizing it. Although I love reorg I love organization, obviously. I love organizing. But to me, I, it's not worth the time and effort unless the system that I stopped working for me. Um, and you know it stops working for you when things get cluttered. Because if you no longer feel motivated to put things back in their place in the organization system you have in place, that means that system is not functioning for you. So that would be when I decided to change things up. And that is all for my OLJ Q&A this time. I thank you so much, you guys, again, for all of your wonderful questions. If I didn't get to yours this time, I'm very my well next time. Uh, as usual, I will, you know, probably do this in a few months and I'll reach out on Facebook and Twitter again. Um, but like I said, I will be back to my clothing and accessories organization next week with a look at my closet. Thank you for your patience while I uh, get everything just how I want it to share with you guys and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much for watching guys. Take care. Bye